Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below, your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we're discussing a watch that originally launched in 2012 and has become something of a phenomenon online. This, 40 millimeters in yellow gold is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona Rainbow, reference 116598RBOW. The watch also includes a lovely gold meteorite sub-register, so this is not just the rainbow, this is the rainbow plus. Taking a quick look at the watch, you can see that on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, the watch wears easily. Comfortable, flat, extravagant to be sure, but it's fairly easy to wear on a smaller wrist, as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. A lady could absolutely wear this, and yes, it'll fit underneath the cuff, but you don't buy a watch like this to disappear the timepiece. Taking a quick look at the other dimensions, the spacing between the lugs is 20 millimeters, probably academic as you're unlikely to put a strap on this watch, but you could. The watch is 12.3 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip, 47.5 millimeters, and if we include the solid end links of the bracelet, the total distance across the wrist is 51.9 millimeters. Now the timepiece includes an oyster bracelet, there's a little bit of a taper, there's an integrated end link to better join it with the case. Polished center, polished outer flank, removable links fixed by screws, satinated shoulders, and then we have a clasp that is polished internally and it features a beak and a hook. That's the first locking system. And then there's a clamshell on top of that. So it's actually double locking. There's a little curve to dig your nail in and pry open the clamshell. And then internally, we have Easy Link, which is a five millimeter in and out tool free adjustment. Plus, if you look carefully, three divots with tracks so you can lead your spring bar into any of those three anchoring points and with a strap tool change the bracelet's anchoring point inside the clasp. Now Rolex has its own foundry, it makes its own alloys. It makes its own alloy components, which is to say, case, clasp, and bracelet of this watch are all Rolex. So is the gem setting, and the gem setting is where this watch really sets itself apart, as gem setting is the only entirely manual operation still performed at Rolex. So the gem setting here would be performed much as it would have been back in the 18th or 19th century. These gem set Rolex watches really are the last truly handmade Rolex watches. The only part that is not done manually is the grading of the stones, and that's how Rolex manages to achieve zero color and clarity gradient from stone to stone. That's why, for example, all of the brilliant cut diamonds in the lugs and the crown guards are the same color and equally clear. Now, the gradient from sapphire to sapphire inside the bezel is carefully measured so you can create that Roy G. Biv shift that includes the entire color spectrum, and the shift from stone to stone is the same percentage shift in terms of color. So you perceive it as being very gentle rather than obviously stepped. You'll also note that the setting is nearly invisible as you have the outer and the inner bezel, but you don't have pincers. That is, you don't have little brackets that hold the gems within the lugs and the crown guards. This is what's known as an invisible setting. The dial is black lacquer, and then we have golden tinged meteorite. So we have meteorite that is oxidized and then stabilized to create these Vidman statin patterns. And then of course, a little bit of gilding is added to change the color from silver to gold. We have gold indices as well as gold crown and gold Arabic numeral 30. On top of those indices, we have a brilliant cut gem of equal clarity, carats, and color. And again, all of that would be laser scanned and computer matched before being set by hand. So let's do a quick loom shot here because there is loom and we'll appreciate it. You can see it's only on the hands on this model. We have a Rolex trip lock crown in gold. You know that because it has three dots, but the dot in the center is the largest, so it's a trip lock in gold. Screw down crown, 100 meter water resistance, solid case back inside Rolex manufactured caliber 4130. Bi directional automatic winding, 72 hour power reserve. It has a stop seconds function, pivots on 44 joules. It has a 4 hertz or 8 beat per second rate. It has a vertical clutch and column wheel chronograph tandem. So thanks to the column wheel, you get that crisp 
feel and sound when you operate the chronograph, and thanks to the vertical clutch, there is no stagger or jump to the second sand when you start it further. Due to the vertical clutch, you can leave it running with no additional wear or tear to the movement. Now, it is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer, but Rolex, of course, tests beyond chronometer spec with a fully cased up watch. Of the timepiece you see right here, features a free sprung balance and a full balance bridge for better shock tolerance. And the Caliper 4130, which replaced the old Zenith El Primero, was the first Rolex automatic movement to use a rotor bearing rather than a jeweled staff for greater shock tolerance. Moreover, the watch uses a handmade overcoil hairspring to better help it keep time in any physical position during the COSC and Rolex in-house tests. And of course, that hairspring is made of a niobium zirconium alloy Rolex calls Parachrom that is highly anti-magnetic, so shock resistant, water resistant, and anti-magnetic, and of course, gorgeous and colorful. Reach out to TMOS with thewatchbox.com for pricing.